everybody. Uh, one of the best things, I guess, of being the last one is that I know already what I've been listening these two days, what I should say, what I shouldn't be saying. And, if, you know, if, if I had had time, I would even change my presentation early today because a lot of things have been <coughs> said already. Although I haven't seen that much stuff uh, about uh, what's going to happen with all this digital data that we are increasingly producing in our discipline. It's, people is talking like archiving, but in a general way. They don't talk too much about what are we going to do with that. And let, oh, until that last talk, which I like a lot to hear about provenance, because that's something that I'm taking care of a lot. My work in headline archaeology mostly is, you know, graphics, but uh, archiving is also part of graphics in our company, and especially all the data related to 3D representations and graphics in general, obviously, is, it belongs to us. So I started dealing with all our digital stuff, when I arrived in Headland, and we already had like a lot of stuff going digital. We already have all the databases, spreadsheets, and all the GIS products, the CAD stuff from physical base, the photogrammetry, laser scan, the remote sensing. And obviously, we were heading just towards a paper test recording system. Now we are working on a project that is going to start using iPads on site, following other initiatives that we have been studying before. And obviously, we are going to need a bigger boat. That's the first thought that we had there in our department. It was like, oh my god, I don't have a space for this. The server is, is crumbling now. But we need more space, I need more hard drives. I need more backup, more stuff. But the second thing you think is like, okay, yeah, but also a preservation plan. I don't care how many terabytes I got, I can just pour a lot of terabytes of data, models, uh, whatever I can save in there. But if I don't have a plan, that's not going to be useful in a five, ten years term. So I just say here, uh, we all know storage, we define storage just as the purely technical count of bits that we need. But preservation is more related to how we secure the store information so it can be retrieved in a future. As uh, Stephen has said already, if you don't have enough information linked to that, it's only bytes. doesn't mean anything. Personally, I don't think a photogrammetry, as much as can be the best photogrammetry ever, it doesn't have any data linked to that that I can retrieve, that I can assess and even though replicate in a future, that's useless. At least for me, it's useless. So, obviously, in archaeology, especially in commercial archaeology, our research data is mostly unique and it cannot be replaced, especially because we work for developers and the developers, once they finish their site, it's quite rare to preserve those remains there. So that's going to be gone forever. It's quite important to create the data that we extract from our work. We started following some sort of uh, main principles of the London Charter, mainly to make sure that all the data that we gather complies with what we call our research strategy, that is also obviously included in all the research strategies in the different areas of the UK. In not only in Scotland, where we got our main office, but in the other areas of the UK where we also have work. Our main objective now is just to make sure that all that, all the computer-based visualizations and products that we got, got from our activities, our projects, are safe and they can be identified and evaluated structurally and in a documented way. Obviously, as I mentioned before, the importance of metadata. We also adhere to the 3D icons project from the European Commission, just in those principles and all good 
must be that 3D data to have a good quality control of it. And also, we establish a schema of metadata to support provenance and parametric. So, as uh, Stephen has mentioned already, provenance is all, our, all that record that describes entities, processes involved in producing and delivering or otherwise blessing that resource. I mean, all the equipment used, the settings, the light sources, all the technical stuff. And parameter is also more related to the inference of the archaeologists, so the people who is making the recording or furthermore, after that recording is done, is uh, preparing a digital resource from that activity, <coughs> we have to make sure that that's with that in, within the scope of that parallel because otherwise we don't have any, you know, the, that input. I think that the human input is obviously the most important when producing this stuff. We created in 2006, I think it was the Bolt, that's what we call it, the Bolt. I call it personally the Crypt because I'm there. I've been there forever and doing just great, great general stuff with the data, with the data by myself most of the time, because that's something that I would like to point out. A lot of this stuff is really nice. People is doing a lot of stuff on the field. We are promoting a lot of the lots of photogrammetrical use on site and all that. But once they come back to the office, and that goes into the pipeline of post excavation, the data once is has given us all the information that we need, just dies in that vault. It's in there. We got it organized really well, but most of the people, they don't really like to use it. I'm finding that quite upsetting because they don't want to see farther or beyond that uh, nice model that you can reproduce in Sketchfab or you know use for a few measurements. They don't see beyond. Obviously, that's probably because in our field, in commercial archaeology, if the client or the consultant doesn't ask for something like that, probably we, don't, we are not interested in that. So the organization that we got now is quite simple. It's just the vault consists on different projects. All of our projects have like four digits codes with uh, uh, the year, and that help us to save all of our data, at least in, in talking about digital resources, in raw data, working files, and products. Right now, we got like a overwhelming quantity of raw data, almost four terabytes of models, and that's increasing <coughs> the months. The working files, that is also all these proprietary project files, like mostly with PhotoScan or Zephyr, that is what we are using now. And then the products, that is slowly also growing up now. But it's, that's the last step of our curation of these uh, data resources. So it's mostly optimized models, so we can use them as, you know, for visualization purposes, or maybe to do 3D printing with them, something that is still, in, still going on. Obviously, all this work that we do while curating this is complemented with all the metadata, as much provenance as per data. I make sure as much as I can that I pester all my colleagues so I can have the, the direct input from the very first place I started to do the recording of everything on site until we finished the optimized model. I like to ask them their input because otherwise, I mean, I, I, I'm just working with somebody else stuff, and I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to, you know, what's the intention, the initial intention that they had beyond just that doing a recording. But I think that's not fair. One of the things that is really good for us is that uh, we are saving not only metadata with the raw data, the work files, everything has metadata. Just in case we lose anything, we can always go back and retrace everything. And one of the best out outputs that we are getting from that is that right now we know it's going to change, that the 3D PDF is something that's becoming obsolete, but right now with 
thought that at the beginning we thought that that was the best option that we had. It's a 3D PDF with a brief summary, followed by the data from the database, where everything is filled in, and then the model itself, normally in low poly. This will be sort of what we got in that PDF for the easiness of the, all the work team to retrieve the data without going into, you know, they just go to the database, they find the site code, then in that database you know if you got an heritage asset that is related to a digital resource or not. If you want to see the digital resource, you just have to follow the database and retrieve this. And it's just basic information mostly, following the Carare standards. And we are just developing this further. And for this, we are, you know, it's really helpful to be here in this forums because you can learn more stuff, which I think is really good. We should promote more of this collaborative approach between us. That's the fancy part that everybody loves, like you know, doing <coughs> in the 3D PDF is much better because you can interact with that and even taking measurements. It's PowerPoint that you know, I couldn't do. And that's some sort of summary of what relationships we use to determine the, the information that we have to gather for both the heritage asset and the digital results. So with this we are being able to make sure that nothing gets lost in translation between the heritage asset, the excavation, <coughs> the publication of the results and all that, and the digital results. Right now we are mm, having certain issues with the digital sources because I don't, there's not much of a demand of that, at least uh, in my experience. Not even in, you know, we could have even augmented reality for finds from publications <coughs> where you can make compatible to see that uh, traditional illustration with a proper 3D view that you can interact with in a, in a publication, but it's something that we are just trying to develop and obviously try to, to make the clients and, you know, the people in PostX more involved with, but that's going really slow. The benefits so far that we have found with this is uh, that this preservation plan right now is making more accessible the data to everyone in the company. People is more likely to go into our archives to see what's going on with the, the outcomes of our projects if they got a nice way and a structured way to go through the data. Also including all the metadata to all these porn digital objects helps to make them complete records and part of our research strategy, strategy, which means that you can retrieve information from a 3D object like a, a model, that super right model, for example, that I got already extracted the elevation data model, the sort of mosaic for that, and even the contours, and everything is safe in a, in a GIS file in a GIS project along with the other stuff, along with the OASIS or the boundary file and the rest of the digital data. It's also promoting a lot of discussion among our team, which is quite good because we are, there's a lot of old dogs like myself and a lot of newbies coming in and it's quite in, you know, enriching to have that, that discussion every day and that sort of thing. Okay. What do you think? It's better, you know, digital and logic. It's also encouraging not only the colleagues but also the specialists to embrace technology along with the theoretical approach behind it. So they know what's gonna what's happening, why we are doing this. All that information that we have in the in the para data is helping to understand why we are doing this. It's enhancing also our usual collaborative approach but beyond yes, the company. And it's helping us to keep a clean repository of 3D objects to use for derivatives because one of the best things of having a preservation plan for this is that you throw to the garbage bin a lot of stuff once you go through it. Otherwise it's, it's just you know, too much to deal with and you end up with a lot of 
bytes that are just waste. So, yeah, it's me.